Hello, and welcome to a presentation on infinite banking for real estate investors. My name is Kathleen Vandenberg, and I am a certified financial planner. I am also an infinite banking practitioner, which is a specialty in insurance, and a real estate investor. Together with my husband, we own over 10 income, uh, income properties. Uh, many of them are duplexes. Today, what I'd like to cover with you is a high level discussion on what infinite banking is, how infinite banking is truly the and asset. We want you to do this plus invest in investment properties. We uh, don't want you to do this instead of investment properties or have one less property by doing this or anything like that. We are going to show you how to purchase investment properties using your infinite banking policy as the down payment. and. I'm also going to discuss at the end how we are using it now in wealth building years, but also in retirement and of course the death benefit. So let's get started. I am not what you would call a traditional financial planner. Traditional financial planners are rooted in what we call accumulation theory. They will say things like put money in an RSP and grow it over time and it will compound over time and you will have this pool of assets at the end of the day. That's not what we are recommending for our clients as infinite banking practitioners. We are rooted in economic theory. We want you to put your money in motion. That's why we're trying to help you to build an infinite banking um, uh, policy and infinite uh, an infinite banking account accessible cash for you to be able to do wealth strategies. We love it when someone would borrow against their principal residence and buy an income property and now they have uh, cash flow from that property and they can use that to help fund an infinite banking policy or it might even happen in reverse. They start to fund an infinite banking policy and it grows tax advantage and then they can use that that the money in, in their banking um, in their banking policy to purchase investment properties. So this is what we call money in motion or economic theory. And that's what we want. We wanna help people create infinite wealth. So if you are like most of my clients, prior to having a discussion with me, you didn't really wanna purchase insurance. It wasn't really fun. What you liked was uh, buying properties, uh, buying stocks, uh, lending out money, private mortgages, investing in the business, et cetera. But I'm here to show you how funding an infinite banking policy is not going to limit you from doing all those other great wealth strategies. In fact, in fact, it should help you. What is infinite banking? Infinite banking is basically a safe warehouse of wealth. It is uncorrelated to other assets such as real estate, and it's extremely efficient tax advantage growth of your wealth. It is like a big accessible line of credit that as an owner of the, these insurance policies, you have a contractual right to. Uh, that's what I love the most. You know, I don't have to apply to get my capital out. Uh, there's no credit check. It doesn't hit my credit score. And I am not obligated to pay any um, of the interest on the, uh, the funds that I've borrowed either. It's very much like a property line of credit would operate, but if it was automatic. So let's say you had a property that was 80% loan to value HELOC. And every time your property went up, it, it automatically went up. You never had to apply for it. It's a very similar operation. Let's take a look at how a policy might work. Here we have uh, Johnny Cash, and he is 45 years old, and he's going to be putting, he's going to be funding his banking, his private banking policy, around 20,000 a year. And he has an insurance need of 1 million. So what we've done here is you can see that uh, he's applying 20,000 into the uh, banking policy, and he can access up to 90% of the cash value. This cash value is non-guaranteed. However, all of the insurers that we work with as infinite banking practitioners 
have a history of, of issuing uh, dividends ongoing. They've never not issued dividends. Now, certainly this is an illustration and the numbers could be higher or they could be lower. They will be higher or they will be lower. It won't be exactly like this. Uh, this here is using a, um, a policy based on current dividend, uh, current dividend scale. So the, you can see the insurance which started out at a million at the end of the year is gone up by over $50,000. If we fast forward to year 10, there's $210,000 of cash value. And again, he can access up to 90% of that. And his death benefit here has grown from 1 million to 1.5 million. Now, I'm going to show you an example of him accessing the cash value at year 10. However, all along, he can certainly access it. I'm just trying to make the numbers a simple. So what happens at year 10, over 200,000 of cash value, he's gonna borrow 150 of that to purchase an income property that's worth around 600,000. So 20% down payment. We're going to assume that this property is probably earning an income of 36, thousand a year, of which the um, interest component on the policy loan is 7,500. I mentioned you don't have an obligation to pay the policy loan, but in order to get to maintain the tax deductibility, you should be paying the interest on an annual basis. How would it work if he were to pass away? So Johnny's life expectancy is 85. Let's assume that he's continued to borrow against the policy up to a million dollars. At 85, his policy is now worth 2.7 million. And the cash value is just over uh, 2 million. However, he's borrowed 1 million of it. So when he passes away, his family, his named beneficiaries would get the death benefit minus what he's already accessed through a loan. But this money hasn't disappeared, right? He was using it in the income property. So it still resides in a, in a wealth vehicle in this situation in the income property. Now, let's assume he doesn't pass away at 85, but he sells his investment property. What would happen then, because maybe he's sick of managing it, whatever, he would uh, sell the property and he would probably, let's say, earn around $2 million and pay tax on the property. Um, the loan will be retired, so he would no longer have a loan on his policy, but now he's this person with 2.7 million of insurance and 2.1 million of cash value. So he could spend down other assets, you know, he might want to do this prior to age 85 as an example, he could spend down the, the money from the property and allow the policy to continue to grow. So this is really how people will use policies to fund additional wealth strategies. I wanna just go over some specific numbers to show you how using an infinite banking policy, aside from the fact that it's you know, diversified and it's outside of real estate and tax advantage, is actually the better way to fund the purchase of an investment property. I'm going to look at an example of a property worth 800,000. So the down payment of 20% will be 160. I'm gonna give you two options. You can either purchase the, the property using cash or you can purchase the property down payment funded from a, a loan from your policy. So if you use cash, I'm gonna assume the return on your investment is $57,000. Now that return consists of um, the income that you get, so rental income minus the expenses, so mortgage, and I'm assuming 1.5% of additional expenses like vacancies, taxes, um, insurance, uh, maintenance. And then I'm also going to include, I'm going to add on to that the mortgage pay down because that's equity that you're building. And I'm assuming a 5% appreciation rate in the properties. And that would create an additional uh, 40,000. So the return that you would get on your property here, assuming a 50% tax bracket is 17% after tax rate of return. But if you had used your policy to fund that, there would be an additional cost. So additional cost of just over 7,000 based on the policy loan rate of 4%. So in this case, your uh, return would be 25,000, not the 20, 
uh, just over 28. So your return is slightly lower with the infinite banking policy. It will be only 15% versus 17%. But we haven't included everything here because the policy is still continuing to grow. So the beauty of borrowing against the policy is you're not you know, you're not cashing out the policy. The cash value is still continuing to grow because you're borrowing that money from the insurance company and paying an interest. And that's helping to fund the PAR policy. So based on an internal rate of return of the policy of 5%, this would yield an additional uh, value of 8,000 8, in growth. So now, you're not looking at the 25,000 return on the policy, you're looking at 33. And also structured properly, there should be no tax liability on this 8,000, which means the return on this policy is now in excess of 20% versus the 17, almost 18 of, of doing it the paying cash way. So this is a 16% improvement. When you borrow against the policy to purchase wealth strategies and create the interest deductibility and still allow your policy to grow tax sheltered, tax efficiently, you can see how you will get this enhanced rate of return. The cash value you have continues to go uninterrupted and that's why you have the enhanced growth. So what have we covered here? We've shown how these policies are uncorrelated assets to uh, other investment strategies like real estate. Um, I've also mentioned that the appreciation in these policies is guaranteed. This is an asset that can never go down. And personally, as I get on in years and I start to approach pre-retirement retirement, I like the fact that I can have this safe pool of money that is earning way much, way more than a GIC or any other safe money would, would get me. I love the fact that it's uncorrelated. Personally, I recently sold our policies and sorry, sold a property and paid back the loans on our on our uh, policies because I feel that I wanted to take something off the table because real estate prices were so high. But I love the fact that if it pulls back, I will still have access to that capital to get back into buying more real estate if that's what I choose to do. It's available line of credit uh, for me if I want it. And even if real estate, mark, real estate prices don't pull back, I know that you know, in the next couple of years, there will be some amazing real estate opportunity that I will want to do. And I've got the capital to, uh, to, uh, to be able to jump in when I need it. But my money is continuing to grow while I wait. So really these infinite banking policies give you the insurance that you likely need and the insurance that you want. It's complete access to your capital. We are not locking your out, out of your capital. Unlike putting money in, a, in term insurance, you can never access any of that back or putting money in an RSP, it's hugely tax punitive. Even a TFSA, you can access it, but then you're, you're cutting off the, the tax sheltered growth. So I love the fact that if you borrow for wealth strategies, you can continue to create that interest deductibility and that tax advantage growth. I truly believe these are what I would say fixed income replacements. I don't want clients to go into you know, GICs. A 10-year GIC is earning 2% right now. And inflation is, I don't know, 7, 15, something ridiculous. So they're actually losing money going into safe assets. And if you are a more advanced real estate investor and have a real estate hold co, you can actually pay the premiums for these policies from the hold co. So instead of taking the money out and paying tax on it and then paying the premium, the policy can be owned through the hold co. So that's another way to save tax. I mean, truly, true wealth is created really with tax, to, tax savings. The second way that these policies really help you is in retirement. I did another full video on that. I suggest if you want to hear more about that, that you uh, review that. But just to high level, you are relegated to what we call the safe withdrawal rate as a percentage of money that you can access. But with these investment, uh, sorry, with these infinite banking policies, 
you are able to create a world where you can spend down other assets, pay less tax on them over time, and have this pool of money continuing to grow in a tax efficient and tax advantage manner and very inflation friendly, right? You wanna get better um, rates of return than you would see in a GIC. It's not an investment, but there is an internal rate of return to these policies. And it's an amazing uh, pool of money that you access through a collateral loan. And of course, the infinite banking policy is an insurance policy and is available as a tax-free benefit at death to your named beneficiaries. Um, I talk so often to clients that are concerned that their children will never be able to get into investment properties like they have, or even maybe even own their own home. So isn't it nice to know that these policies at the time of death will be available to help offset these capital gains taxes, which are mounting in increasingly year after year, and allow your children to be able to and actually inherit more money so they too can get started on investment properties. Now, of course, you don't have to pass away before you can help them get started. I showed you how you can access the money during, um, during, your, during your lifetime to get them started. But the capital gains tax, which is due at death, uh, that extra death benefit is really something that can uh, offset that to a great degree. So I like that too. So in summary, these infinite banking policies, I'm not saying do this and not buy the next investment property. I'm saying do both. It's truly the and asset. Uh, we don't, we never want to lock you out of your money. It's all about liquidity use and control of your money. RSPs can lock you out of your money. You can access the money, but the tax penalty is massive. We always want to create situations that have the most liquidity for you because we know that opportunities come along and we want to make sure that the capital is there. I mean, it's very similar to creating a readvanceable mortgage. So you have that capital if and when you need it. I truly believe that the combination of real estate with the infinite banking policy is the holy grail of retirement. What we do and your tax are, you know, consult with your tax accountant. What we do is we often depreciate our property. So we can show, so the income that we get from our properties is reduced by a depreciation amount. And we know that that income will come into fruition when we sell or pass away. But we want, what we want is to postpone the tax uh, based on our situation as long as possible. So we have created a good income from our income properties. And then we've also created a tax advantage income from our insurance policies. It's amazing that you can create a world where you can have 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month, whatever your number is, and pay zero tax on it. That to me is really the holy grail of retirement. I just want more money in my pocket and I want clients to be able to do the same. I want to thank you for your time for listening to this video. I encourage you to contact an infinite banking practitioner yourself so that you can look at a policy that is specifically structured for your particular situation. Thank you again and best of luck. IB Canada Group, your independent authority for information on the infinite banking concept.